Welcome to ESC TV. I'm Mary L. Jessup, and I'm here with Dr. Amazio to talk about the COPS-2 trial. Please tell us why you followed up with COPS-2 after your successful COPS-1 trial. Yes, in the COPS-1 uh, trial, uh, we found that colchicine, given a uh, 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 starting from postoperative day three, was able to prevent several postoperative complications, including postpericardiotomy syndrome, postoperative atrial fibrillation, and postoperative effusion. Uh, considering that the, in this trial the drug was given starting from postoperative day three, and that uh, the maximal incidence of postoperative atrial fibrillation is in the first three days, we speculated that probably the use of colchicine before surgery could even be more efficacious and thus we planned the COPS-2 trials. And what did you find? Well, um, despite uh, this uh, interesting hypothesis, uh, we found that uh, colchicine given uh, uh, two to three days before surgery, was able to prevent the postpericardiotomy syndrome, as in the COP1 trial, but failed to prevent uh, postoperative atrial fibrillation. And, uh, mm, however, in the pre-specified on-treatment analysis that this patient could tolerate the, the drug, colchicine was able to prevent the postoperative atrial fibrillation. And so the, our hypothesis is that uh, a high rate of uh, uh, side effects, essentially um, gastrointestinal intolerance, uh, um, limited the, uh, the efficacy of the drug. What, what dose of colchicine did you use? We, uh, um, in order to improve the patient compliance, we avoided the loading dose, and uh, such as in the COPS-1, and we uh, gave uh, weight-adjusted doses, that is uh, uh, 0.5 milligram twice daily, or only once daily in patients of less than 70 kilograms. So moving f um, from COPS-2, how would you use colchicine? Well, um, the evidence is now that probably uh, treatment, an early treatment of the postpericardiotomy syndrome or a, a prevention after the uh, cardiac surgery is better than giving the drug before surgery because in the perioperative period we have different drugs uh, such as proton pump inhibitors and antibiotics that are commonly used in this patient and also predispose the patient to uh, gastrointestinal intolerance. So we have a combination of different drugs that may uh, limit the uh, patient compliance in this setting. Thank you for ESC-TV. Thank you very much.